MLS is back. No, literally, that's what they're calling it. MLS is back tournament. It'll feature 54 games, 26 <laughs> teams start July 8th, run through August 11th. The competition will be broken down into six groups. They'll eventually work their way down to a round of 16, all the way through the final. All games to be played at the ESPN Wide World of Sports on the Disney World Complex in Florida. What is at stake? That is very critical. The winner gets the 2021 CONCACAF Champions League spot, one of those for Major League Soccer. They also get potentially their share of $1.1 in additional bonus money. And it should be noted, perhaps most importantly of all, that group play games will count towards Major League Soccer's regular season. MLS is committed to continuing their regular season beyond this tournament. A couple MLS vets, Hercules Gomez, Alejandro Moreno, join us now. Herc, I'll start with you. MLS is the only league beyond the National Women's Soccer League in the footballing world to abandon their competition format in favor of this one-off tournament. Is it the right move or the wrong move? I think it's the right move if what you want is create that buzz. And listen, Garber said so today that they have certain obligations with certain sponsors. So this is a way of meeting those obligations. And listen, you spoke about that $1.1 million that will be divided, if you will, within certain phases. I believe it's the essential of 300 k to the winner. So it's like winning an MLS Cup for these players. 150 for second place and so on and so forth. You get that to that $1.1 million throughout that pool which uh, whatever team makes it to whatever round, right? Uh, so it's a little bit more of money in their pockets, but it's also not because it's taken away from that $5 million total that they can win, these players, this pool can win throughout that year. Uh, the players thought that this is a good way of them guaranteeing more money to more players uh, throughout because most players wouldn't hit their bonuses. Don't know if it's going to be incentivized where these players have the player of the tournament, the golden boot of the tournament, so forth and so on. Remains to be seen. But it's a good idea to create that buzz, a good idea for these players to get back and maybe earn a little extra money and that CONCACAF Champions League spot because with that spot comes more money that you can use in the following year. Ale, curious about your thoughts. Would you prefer Major League Soccer stick to their regular season plan or do you think they need this tournament format? I would prefer that Hercules didn't wear that shirt today. That's uh, clear. I'm... You, you asked about the right and wrong option for MLS. Well, this was definitely the wrong option for Hercules. He's got, he's got an art project going on right Fashion now. Fashion advice show. from Mr. Moreno. Uh, okay. <laughs> if, if we are to move uh, away from that somehow, I can just tell you that I'm excited about the fact that MLS gets back out on the field. And I think it was necessary for MLS, the welfare of this league, the well-being of the players and, and the staff and the organizations out there, that they get back out there on the field. The perception of MLS and why would it be have been a year without Major League Soccer, we don't know what the damage would have been. Uh, we certainly know that it would not have been good. And so, therefore, I'm excited that MLS is out on the field. And if this is the format that we think is what's best available to us, then so be it. I'm all for it. Now... It's one thing to be all for it, and it's another entirely different thing to have uh, expectations as to what this tournament is going to be and what kind of quality of play are you really going to get. The truth is, is that these players haven't had the same amount of time to get ready because of different regulations in different states and different mandates in different states. You also don't have access to uh, full fitness, full match fitness, because you haven't been able to play games. And so it is clear to me that this, uh, in terms of the level of play that we're going to see, even if you have uh, larger rosters and five substitutions and all of the things that they've accommodated, it is clear to me that this is going to have a feel of a preseason given the conditions that you have around you. Now, there's nothing wrong with that as long as we have a clear understanding as to what we really are supposed to be expecting out of the players out on the field. Now, the, the reason I think that you incentivize uh, the players by putting money on the table is, yeah, sure, there's a lot more money for players to get uh, and to have access to given this tournament and this opportunity, but it also tells me that it's a way of MLS saying, hey, there's money out there. This is more than a preseason. This is something that counts. You're going to go to CONCACAF Champions League. So give it your best effort. 
And now this is when coaches are going to have to really manage the minutes for players because if you're a coach, you have to think, okay, I want the very best for my group outside of this month in Orlando. I want them to do well here and to prepare, but really my goal is bigger than this. And how do I go about risking my players in this setup in which we don't really know what the fitness level is truly going to be for all of the teams that are going to be involved. Herc, you were very plugged in with the players in the lead up to these negotiations and eventually this announcement. Now that the MLS is back tournament has been announced, what are they saying and how are they feeling about getting back? It's mixed, Sebi. As you could imagine, there are players who are maybe single and not earning a huge paycheck that see this as a great opportunity to make more money, that aren't so worried maybe for uh, public health reasons. Uh, and then there are other people with families, with pregnant partners, who are definitely worried about going into this MLS bubble, this, this MLS city, if you will, and the possibilities of, well, this is a pandemic and you're away from your loved ones during said pandemic. So they're all over the place. I can tell you it's very split. What they do know is what they make the percentage of reduction they negotiated depended on this tournament. They weren't exclusive in each other. They were almost negotiated as a package deal. Whether that's fair or not in the opinion of, of, of the public, it's what it was. So these players understand that it's vital to play in this tournament. It's vital for the health, as Ali mentioned, uh, when he said he didn't know what the, I guess, fallout would be. Well, Don Garber says it would have been a million, a billion dollar loss if MLS didn't get back. This is a caveat. They needed this to get back, and they want to put it off with the boom. So it is what it is. The players understand that, but the reaction is very mixed. Ali, we should note MLS is promising extensive medical protocols and a comprehensive COVID-19 testing plan. Uh, we should also note Orange County, where this event will go down, has seen a positive test rate spike in just the last week, according to the Associated Press. If you were a player, how would you feel? Well, Sebi, at this point, I think I would have to cross over into player mode and say I cannot concern myself with what is it that they're doing in terms of health and safe, of safety of the players. I have to trust. I have to trust and put my blind trust that they're doing everything they can to keep us safe, to keep us healthy. Because if I'm concerned about that, they, and I cannot focus on what I'm doing out on the field. Because if I'm concerned about the pandemic, then I'm also concerned about my family. And if I'm concerned about my family at the time that I'm supposed to be playing, then you're not going to get anywhere near the best of my performance. That, 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 is, that is just human nature. And so I think as a player, you control the things that you can control, the things that are in front of you. And what's in front of you is your preparation, your fitness level, the things that you need to do in order to be ready to play. The other thing, when they're taking your temperature and there's doctors and there's a protocol and you, you follow the rules and you follow the instructions of those people around you that you trust have your best interest in mind. And then after that, you worry about what happens out on the field. If I were a player, I would actually be more concerned about, okay, we are going to go from not playing, and I mean not playing, to now playing a bunch of games in a short period of time. The likelihood of injury then spikes up as well. So while you're talking about Orange County and the spike of, of, of positive cases, I would also be concerned about the spike of, of injuries and soft tissue injuries and injuries that happen from players not being fully ready and fully fit, ready to go. And now they have to be available for selection because the tournament calls upon. And so that's, that's the balance that I would have. I can only control what's in front of me, and what's in front of me is my preparation. I cannot control the things that go around Orange County in Florida and the things that go in, at, a, at a government level, the things that MLS is deciding. I'm going to trust that they have my best interest in mind. Herc, real quick, let's talk competition format. There are going to be six groups. The draw will take place on Thursday afternoon. Who's your favorite? Before I answer that, let me just add to Ali's comment. The players hired a professional. They hired an epidemiologist who told them they're just as safe in Orlando in this MLS bubble, if you will, than they would be in their home markets. So the players also did their due diligence, and I agree with Ali. Uh, 
they're going to have testing that most Americans don't have access to while at a reduction that most Americans wish they had. Some 25 plus million lost their jobs. So yes, the players uh, right now, they don't have a lot to say. I don't want to or I shouldn't go to. Now, as far as who's the favorite, I mean, Ali touched upon this preseason, if you will. Everybody starts from scratch. You're going to take a bunch of different players from different markets and throw them into this very humid little bubble with a lot of games in a short period of time. So I'm looking at who's got the best, I would say probably overall team. And if you go off a body of work, I'd have to say the money's in the West Coast. And if I had to pick, and I can't just say one, two teams, I would say Seattle and LAFC for what they've shown in the past, the players they have, and what they did in these few games that MLS was active. So those would be my two favorites. Alice, Seattle, LAFC, you adding anybody else to the front runner list? I can't believe you're asking as to who's the favorite in this tournament, Seth. Honestly, <laughs> this is a this is this is a toss-up. It's a toss-up. It it really depends on how uh, coaches and organizations uh, face what's in front of them and what is it that they're willing to risk and and what their priorities are. And 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 so if you're Bob Bradley and Carlos Vela tells you, you know what. I'm feeling a little niggle here and there. I'm, my back's a little tight, hamstring's a little tight. Are you going to continue to play him because you want to win this tournament? And, and so you, you have to really evaluate what the priorities are. I would actually say that teams that were not considered to be favorites in MLS or favorites to have a place in CONCACAF Champions League may be more motivated to win this tournament than, say, a team like LAFC. Because this is a back way. This is a no. back door into a competition that otherwise you would not have had access to. And so maybe for them, that's motivation. I don't think it's nearly as important and critical to teams like LAFC. If you're going to have me pick one, I suppose just to play along with you, Seb, I'm not going to go West Coast. I'll go East Coast. Why not? Atlanta United. <sighs> Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.